the following is an explanation of the fuel and fuel water and exhaust systems of an 1869 Gibson Sterrett engine which had been converted to run with a Bessemer cylinder. Okay? Yeah. Alright, in the beginning, we start at the propane tank, and that is a regulator which is reducing the pressure from the bottle down to approximately three to three and a half pounds of pressure. Then it follows through the hose and it goes up to this point right here where it goes into the hot tube and is regulated by a needle valve at the three to three and a half pounds of pressure. It also goes and through a regulator and is dropped down to approximately five inches of water column. And a, a, the, the measurement of water column is is every 27.062 inches of water column equals one pound of pressure. The gas continues up through the safety shutoff valve and goes into an accumulator tank where the gas expands. The gas, the expanded gas is drawn out through this pipe and this needle valve and proceeds to go down into the fuel valve on the intake side of the cylinder. Uh, also note that this is a two cycle engine so this could be in plain terms considered as a reed valve in a two, in a two cycle engine. Although this is much larger than any, <laughs> this is much larger than any reed valve would be. Now, this valve also controls, as the valve moves up and down, it can shuts the fuel off, turns the fuel on to the engine as needed by vacuum, which is produced by the piston moving back and forth in the cylinder. Uh, to control the speed of the engine, then what you would do is, is you would move this valve in or out the appropriate amount to give it more fuel. Uh, then, mix the bowl. Let's go to the other side. On this side of the engine, this is the this is the air inlet to the engine through the filter, which is placed inside of that hole. It comes up through this valve, and you can give the engine the appropriate amount of air needed for the correct RPM by moving this valve. Air then goes down and goes in also into this into the same valve that was mentioned in the last step. All right. Now, now that completes the fuel system for the engine. That's all that's necessary for it to be able to run as long as it, as long as the piston's moving back and forth and it's doing what the hot tube is lit, it ought to sit there and run. Now, the next thing up is the water system for it to be able to cool it. The tank in the back has the appropriate amount of water to be able to cool it, which is right about 30 gallons. Then it follows along out through that hole, goes down through the side of the frame goes over and enters a pump. This is the pump, this is the inlet for the water pump. All right. The pump is what's known as a piston-driven positive displacement pump. The stroke on the engine is 12 inches, and this right here has a small piston which moves back and forth. It's one and a quarter inches on the diameter, and when it pulls back, it pulls a column of water up into the pump, and back to where the piston stops, which is 12 inches back from the, from the front edge of it. Then, when the piston goes forward, there is a valve inside of here which closes down. This valve lifts up off the seat and the water proceeds to go through an air chamber right here and down through this pipe and into the head of the engine, where it is then forced up through the engine up through this pipe and runs over and to returns to the tank to finish the, to finish the loop for the water to circulate. And the pump is moving approximately three to three and a half gallons of water per minute through the pump and through the cylinder and back to the tank. Now obviously as the engine speeds up, then this pump would make more strokes, you would have more water to, to be able to cool it at a greater rate of speed. Yeah. 
And next, that completes the water system there. Right. The next system would be the exhaust port, the exhaust system out of the engine. This two and a half inch pipe right here, which goes down, goes into this pop muffler, is the exhaust. The way that it works is that you have a high velocity stream of gas going into this open area, and as soon as it, as soon as this is moving, moves the high, as soon as this high velocity goes into this tank, it expands out and it loses all of its pressure, and hence it makes it run quieter as it goes. And then you tune the length of the exhaust to make the engine run correctly by right here, and then the exhaust is split out.